Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 4, verses 1 to 10. James, chapter 4, verses 1 to 10. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. So you covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity, enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he je jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. John Joseph Achin is an ordained minister with the Mathua Church. He has served many places from Bangalore to Kerala to the US of A and uh, is presently a minister with the Mathua Church. Uh, he's ministering with the bishop in Mumbai. Um, I still remember around 45 years ago, um, you know, I was having a, I was generally leading in the, in the worship and uh, music of all the uh, youth conferences, especially the Martama Youth Conferences those days in the Western region. Uh, I used to be in Mumbai at the time and uh, Bombay at that time. And I used to go to Gujarat, all different places. And I remember here comes this uh, Amitabh Bachchan, uh, kind of man, young man, uh, six foot two, and he walks in and that was it. Uh, there were, after that, uh, he just had to take over the whole place and uh, uh, amazing man of God, true example of faith. Uh, has gone through many a struggle from that time, uh, at association, uh, love for each other and uh, the families have been so close for a long, long time. Through it all, his faith and uh, his amazing ways, his amazing example of trust and submission uh, with Kochuma and the children have been a source of uh, great inspiration and totally incredible example of proper posture, pro proper position before God. We are indeed blessed to have this uh, passionately holy man of God to minister to us this morning, Reverend Dr. John Joseph. Thank you, Ruji. <clears throat> um, am I audible? Yeah. Perfect. One minute. I can see you, I can't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking as good as ever, don't worry. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you once again for uh, inviting me to this prayer fellowship. 
today, as you all know, is Valentine's Day. Um, I'm not here to wish you a happy Valentine's Day. But I'm here to tell you the secret of the power behind genuine love, agape love. There are packs of love. I would like to talk about prayer more than this relationship of love. We all are craving for genuine love. There is always that need because we experience superfluous love in our day-to-day -day relationship. But what gives you genuine love, that noble love is based on our relationship with God. And that relationship is blossomed only through prayer. If you look at Luke chapter 11, and verse 1, the disciples went to Jesus. And they were not asking for the recipe for how to break five bread and two fishes to feed 5,000 people. They didn't want to know the secret of how to walk on water or how to raise the dead or any of the miracles that Jesus did. On the other hand, they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray the way John taught his disciples. We want to know how to pray because they have seen very explicitly and very profoundly how Jesus ministered. All through the day, he'll be with the people. There was public ministry and through, throughout night. Jesus was spending his time with his heavenly father. So obviously they attributed the success of his ministry, the secret of his ministry to his prayer. So therefore they said, we want to learn the secret of prayer. So teach us to pray. So this morning, let's also ask God, Lord, teach us to pray. For a powerful ministry, if you have to be powerful in your ministry, whether it is personal or, or corporate, it hinges around our prayer life. What you are in private, makes you what you are in the public. Your ministry will be blessed only when you spend time in prayer. The church, the ministry of the church will be blessed only when you spend together in prayer. So we may be praying, but it doesn't bring in result. So what does it mean? How, how do you pray that avails much? Do we have prevailing prayer? Do we have that burden to pray with, with that fer fervent attitude? Can we pray that prayer, agonizing prayer, prevailing prayer, which is very, very important. Now, James is talking about some of the secrets of the successful prayer. The first thing that we observe here in verses one and two, he says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pressure that war in your members? You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. I may not be able to expose the whole thing, but I'll try to expand it to uh, expand it a little bit because of the constraints of time, constraint of time. We have avoided, we have forsaken prayer for various reasons. Today, especially. As we are good in very many things, 
a lot of resources are available. Prayer is for seeking. We don't pray. And James very explicitly, very powerfully says, you war, you scheme, you plan, you kill for your own achievement, for your own satisfaction. You want to achieve certain things in life, but you fail to gain those kind of things because you do not pray. You want to attain certain things in life, you want to receive certain things in life, but you depend on your own power. You don't bring it to God. Therefore, you scheme, you kill, you murder, you plan. All in futile. Things doesn't work. Things do not work because you don't pray. You don't bring it to God. So this is something Paul, I mean, James is talking very powerfully here. How many times you are guilty of the same thing? We operate within the realm of our own power. We don't bring it to the Lord. This is our problem. There is nothing which God can give. There can be issues which you find it very impossible. But our God is greater than our greatest problems. So why don't we bring our issues or problems before God? There was a little boy trying to move a stone, which was obviously quite heavy. So he was putting in his maximum effort strength. He was sweating like you know, his muscles were paining, hurting. And his father was watching the whole, whole exercise. He struggled to move that rock from one place to another. As he was toiling, as he was laboring so hard, the father amusingly asked him, my son, have you used all your strength? He said, obviously, you have seen, you are, you are watching what I'm doing. I'm sweating like anything. But nothing is happening. Then he said, no, you haven't used your full strength. I'm here. Why didn't you ask my help? This is true as well as we too are concerned. Our greatest strength the source of our power is none other than God himself. Why are we not asking God to help us to resolve our issues, our problems that we are really struggling with? Prayerlessness, you know, one way or another is sin because we are asked to pray. To look at First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. This is a mandate that Jesus is giving to us. If you look at Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, as he was exposing in parable, he was exposing it to primarily to teach us that we should pray consistently without any break. Without, the, without feeling any sort of tiredness. We need to pray consistently. It should be an attitude of life. Prayer should be an attitude of life. You should be, you should be soaked in prayer because that's the source of your spiritual life. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own experiences. Don't lean on your own exposure. You may be good at your logistics, you may be good at your planning, you may be good uh, with your wealth or schemings and other things. But we fail often. We get into more trouble, life becomes more chaotic because we don't give God to operate. God is willing to bless us immensely. Unless and until you ask, God to unlock the store of blessing. It won't happen. God really wanted to bless you. God really wanted to bless the church. God really wanted to bless the people around you. I praise and thank God for the way we started this prayer meeting. The beautiful songs that were sung today. It talks about prayer. 
we don't pray for our family we, we don't pray for the wayward brothers and sisters the issues that we are facing today the, the issues that the world is facing today we have programs and projects there's no no doubt about unlike the uh, past years we have so many projects and programs but people to kneel down before him to pray to cry to have that agonizing prayer burden in prayer to wail in prayer is truly lacking among us among our people the church is going through serious issues every church the church is attacked from within and without for various reasons Only God can intervene in this situation and can and can change the situation. Initially, we may be good in planning and talking out programs and organizing worship and all. It can happen, but eventually, you see something something really really happening in organized or in congregational churches or in institutional churches. These things are happening. But if you have the burden to pray, genuinely. that the will in prayer but in your fight sure that my prayers are answered unless and until that happens we see a drastic death you may have to conduct the funeral of our churches as what is going to happen sooner or later now there is something else. there is another element in prayer which james is projecting really powerfully in verses 3 and 4 is called foolish prayer those prayers are prayers which focus on selfishness self-centeredness you are not worried about the glory of god you pray for yourself so the priority should be seeking god's will first god's priority first i do things i organize things i plan i scheme for my own sake i am the person behind it when i when i pray i pray for my own needs my burden is not the glory of god those prayers are foolish prayer don't ever think that god will underwrite your selfish prayer is not concerned of it your prayers seek first his kingdom that's why in lord's prayer as the first part jesus is talking about god's need god's kingdom god's will then comes my need that's the priority all the time seeking his kingdom seeking his name seeking his will that means hallowing his name glorifying and participating in the furtherance of God's kingdom genuinely and diligently seeking his will so this is very very important paul is saying i mean james is saying you adulterers and adulteresses i cannot answer your prayer because you pray with the evil intention you love this world you have a divided heart and because of that you come with a come with dirty hands i cannot answer your prayers now think of a marital relationship husband and wife they have love between each other But sooner or later, she started loving somebody else. She spends her time with someone else. She loves somebody else, and he, and she deliberately avoids this man. And whenever she needs something, for the sake of food, for the sake of a place to sleep, for the sake of for the sake of getting a car or whatever, or getting clothes. she comes back to her husband and asks for all those things do you think he will say yes to it 
probably you'll say an emphatic no because she gives her best to something else, someone else. And how come she can come back and ask him for all this? This is true with most of us. We love this world like the things of the world. And then whenever we need something, we come back to God and ask him, God, give me this, give me that. And how can you expect God to give you an answer to your, your prayers, your supplications? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, Paul talks about the church. He says, I have offered you I have offered you as a pure worthy to the bride, Jesus Christ. You are engaged. I have given you in engagement as a pure virgin. Think of that, the burden of, the burden of Paul for his church, for his people, that you should be always pure. You should be virgin when it comes to a relationship with Christ. Is that true with us? Are we still in love with the world? That's what we plan, our purposes, our intentions, our desires, our own empires. Is that primarily for God's glory? Am I seeking his will behind it or is it my own agenda? It's very, very important. So, Realizing the importance of being pure. Having a relationship with our Lord is very, very important when it comes to prayer. In Psalm 66, verse 18, it says very explicitly, very, very powerfully. If I have considered wickedness in my heart, my Lord would not have heard my prayer. Which means, if I put it in another way, because your heart is wicked, God is not granting your prayer. Now David says, if I have, if I would have, I would have carried that wickedness in my heart, my God would not have answered my prayers. In Proverbs 15 and 8, it says, God rejects the sacrifices of the wicked. And he will listen to prayers of the righteous. Are we wicked before God or are we righteous and pure before God when we come to prayer? So our relationship with God is very, very important when we come to prayer. Think of ourselves. Am I carrying a pure heart every time? So from verses 5 to 10, James is talking about what it means to have faithful prayer. The first thing in verse 5, it says, be sensitive. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God who is within you. God's Spirit is there within us. And if we are sensitive to that, if you are aware that God's Spirit is within you, pray in the Spirit. So be aware of the Spirit that God has instilled in our hearts. If you turn to 1 Corinthians 2.11, it says, The Spirit that is within you discerneth human understanding. If to discern God, you need to discern to God's Spirit. In Romans 8, 26 to 27, verses 26 and 27, it says, It is the Spirit of God that intercedes for us. We cannot. So unless and until I am sensitive to the Spirit of God which is within me, I won't be able to pray faithful prayers, prevailing prayers, victorious prayers, prayers that will be heard and answered. I need to be sensitive every time, every walk of mine, every second. I need to be conscious that I am 
the temple of God. And the spirit of God is there within me and I need to listen and discern the soft, silent words of him. Are we really aware or conscious of this great presence within me? Whenever I come to worship, whenever I come to sing, whenever I come to prayer, am I really, really conscious of that? Am I sensitive to the silent voice of God? So he teaches me what to pray. He helps me to understand this way. This is very, very important. So the first thing that we need to do is discern or to be sensitive to the spirit of God which is within me. Then I can pray powerful prayers before him. And secondly, in verse 6, it says, be submissive to the will of God. Be submissive. Not only sensitive, but we need to be submissive to the will of God. The Spirit of God is granted to me so that I will discern God's will consistently in every spheres of my life, in every details of my life. Prayer is not merely putting some wish list before God, but it is primarily Discerning God's will. It's not my way. It is your way. It's not bending God's will to my way, but lining up my will according to His will. This is the most beautiful experience that the more you sit with Him, you know what His will is for your life, for your family for the immediate community, the community at large, for the nation. God wants somebody to really inter, in, 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 uh, intersect or to, to uh, really get into that relationship so that we will pray in his will so that God can unlock the storehouse of his blessing. And if, if you and I can be a part of that, Seeking his will, it becomes heaven. Heaven is heaven because it is God's will everywhere. Therefore, it can become a reality in our lives or in our family when God's will is universal, consistent in every nook and corner of our lives. So let that happen, seeking God's will all the time. Hallowed be your name. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we need to continuously ask God to reveal his will. When we come to a place where we are willing to come into his presence humbly and broken, God will answer our prayers. It's very, very important. Thirdly, in verse 7, it says, be steadfast in your prayer. This again is very, very important. And I'm really struggling in this area when it comes to prayer you know, in my personal life. As I said before, prayer is not a very easy task. It's not just coming like and then sharing your wish list and getting out of it. Many times we don't even remember what we pray. But the word of God says, it's a war. Steadfast prayer is a war. Now, if you turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10 to 20, it talks about the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Now, the beautiful thing in the whole issue, when you come to verses 17 and 18, we are asked to, before that, we are asked to put on the armor of God and then we are asked to pray, which means you are putting all the required armaments, protections, and then you are entering into a war 
by prayer. So prayer is always a battle, a war with devil. That's why we find it extremely difficult to pray genuine, faithful, victorious prayer. God, devil is not bothered about my programs. He is not bothered about my prison. He is not bothered about my church ministry. He is not bothered about my programs, my projects. He is least bothered of all my projects and programs. But he is concerned the moment I am on my knees, when I start fighting with him through battle, through, through prayer. Many of you have seen that movie, beautiful movie called War Room. That lady gets getting into her closet and praying, and she has she has given that closet as a war room. Here is a place where I fight, where I battle with the devil. Are you really tired when you come out of your, your prayer room? Do you ever felt the feeling that I have really fought? For us, it is a very easy task because for us, it's not a war. It's only simply sharing my wish desires. You always say, I, I threw my need to God, now it is God to take care of it. No, that's not genuine, faithful prayer. Prayer is always a war with devil. So the moment you make a decision to be a prayer warrior, devil will oppose you tooth and nail. He doesn't need anyone. He doesn't want anyone to pray that prevailing prayer. That prayer which is a war, a battle with him. A prayer that participates in the power of God to accomplish his kingdom. That, can, that will happen only when it is a war with devil. So let our prayers be steadfast, a war with devil consistently. And in verse 8 it says, be separated. Be separated. You are holy. So as I said before, don't come to God with dirty hands, with divided hearts, or with double mind. You need to underline that Psalm was the verse in Psalm 66 verse and verse 18. You cannot have two worlds when you come to him. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, you can either serve God or the devil. You cannot serve either or. You can have only either or, not both. So search yourself and ask God to search your heart. Do I give an undivided commitment, an undivided heart, a clean heart before him? In Second Chronicles 7, 14, it says, it's a beautiful verse, and most of us know this particular verse because of the current pandemic situation. If you come to him humbly, living aside your sinful life and then cry for your nation. God will bring healing to the nation. Why is it that God is not answering our prayers? Everywhere, every church is praying to resolve this issue. God has his own plan, we don't know. But we need to search ourselves. That verse very explicitly says, very powerfully says, if you repent of your sins and if you leave your wicked ways and then cry and then pray, God will definitely answer your prayers. So it is high time that we be holy before we come to the throne of grace and prayer. Can we do that? Can we have a pure heart before God? Are we separated in every aspect? Do you feel that you're a Nazarene of God, separated for him, for his plan, for his glory? Then you can come to the throne of grace. Lift up your hearts.
and worship him and pray to him. Let me conclude by focusing on verse 10 for a minute. It says, be sincere when you pray. Be sincere. As I said, when is the last time that you had an agonizing prayer? When is the last time you shed tears when you pray? When is the last time you fasted and prayed? Some of the major issues that is around you. In, this, in that particular song, he says, I, I bring my family. I, my, I bring my dear ones in prayer. I struggled with them, but of no use. But only prayer can change them. When was the last time your eyes were filled with tears when you prayed? In Second Chronicles 32 and verse 20, we can read about the prayer of Hezekiah. He prayed with the prophet Isaiah and there was a war between Israel and some other foreign countries. As they were about to fail in that war, they cried to that agonizing prayer. God answered their prayer. Hezekiah, King Hezekiah, his prophet Isaiah, cried before God, and they found the result. James, in chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, he talks about Elijah, how he prayed. And in fact, James gave an introduction to Elijah. It was a man like us. But he prayed. God answered his prayer. When was the last time he prayed like Jacob? He said to God, he cried to God, and he said, I won't leave you unless you grant me this particular, particular issue. How long we prevail, how long we cry, how long we share this agonizing prayer. More than anything else, what the world needs today is a group of people, a group of believers who can, through not only darting prayers, consistent, faithful prayers, Prayerlessness is sin. So let's desire before God. Let's, be, let's commit ourselves and tell him that I want to be a prayer warrior so that God will open up his storehouse and bless our nation, bless our dear ones, bless our church, bless our community. God bless us again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me the opportunity to share God's word. Thank you so much. Let's just spend a few moments in God's presence and pray. Very special day that the world has appointed as a day of, for love. You know fully well in our Christian life that Good Friday and Easter are days of pure, unadulterated love. Today, as we look for God's unfailing love, may we be filled with love for one another, for each other, as we live in homes where the struggles help us to, Lord, to be patient, to be kind, to envy less, to boast less, to truly be humble, to honor one another and not be selfish. We know, Lord, that there will be differences of opinions there will be conflicts in our homes. Help us not to be overbearing. Help us to be flexible and uh, accommodating and uh, respectful of the, our life partner's point of view. Help us to agree to disagree. Help us to make you the center of our relationships, Lord, that you are the one that watches over our future. Every aspect of your provisions to love and bless 
one another needs to be acknowledged. Help us, Lord, to shape our conversations, our communication. As we discuss our relationships, help us to share our experiences, help us to share our faults and our frailties and our opinions and our hopes and our dreams. Help us to be real about who we are to each other and to be able to expose very clearly what we expect from our relationships. Help us to explore everything with openness and transparency. Grow deeper in intimate relationship and uh, an understanding of each other. Help us to encourage each other, Lord, truly, to support one another with endurance, with encouragement. Help us to live in harmony. May our homes be so blessed that it is so peaceful. And together in one voice, help us to glorify you, to pray, to communicate with you. Help us to have the grace to listen to each other. Help us to speak in love with no bitterness, no resentment. Help us to be kind and gentle. Help us to be building blocks of healthy relationships in our home to very clearly to our children, to our parents, to the community around us, be special guides of what true, holy Christian relationships need to be. First, to effectively express our love, Lord, for one another. Use words that really speak and are meaningful to understand the other person's language and expectations with words of affirmation, of practical help, of gifts, of quality time, of being able to truly sit together and plan the tomorrows. We pray, Lord, that as we live as families, realize that there will be conflicts in our relationship but help us to be quick to forgive and help us to appreciate that we're all different personalities and have different preferences and priorities. Help us to help each other to complete ourselves. Help us to rejoice in the gifts of our children, the love that you have poured into our hearts May it overflow into each one of them. And most of all, Lord, help our love for each other, reflect your love for us. Help us to trust always, hope always, persevere always, and endure always. We know that we are safe in your hands. And you have put us together so we can rely on you in our relationship for our relationship. Help us to love each other, to serve each other in the sacrificial way that you have been, that we have been loved by you. Help us to view our relationship in the light of eternity, Lord, realizing that we're just passing through a face. And we pray, Lord, we plead with you that you show grace throughout our generations to come. Lead us in our choices. Help us to learn from the past. Help us to bind together ourselves by your unending, amazing love. Help us to worship and sing to you together, Lord. Holding hands and realizing that when we are together, our prayers are answered. Thank you for the spiritual empowerment that you give families when they pray together. As we bless you this morning, may this be a special day in our lives that we reignite the love that you have put inside us. We are able to completely surrender to you, Lord, 
We worship and magnify your holy name. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Today's verse, can we just say this together? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Thank you, dear Rachin, for renewing our understanding of prayer. Of our communication with God, thank you for the new insights that you have put in our hearts. Yes, when our faith falters, when our faith is tested, let us persist in our prayers. May the good Lord give you, dear Rachin, the power to bring more and more people to the Lord. And uh, may your spiritual gifts and holy priorities continue to be used for his kingdom building and all the wonderful strategies that he puts into your heart. May God bless you. Thank you for bring, being with us, everyone. Thank you for this early morning prayer that we've been continuing to have. We pray that uh, God blesses each one of us. And as we go through this day, may God uh, lead us in every second. As you know, we uh, meet every night at 9 p.m. for prayer. Those of you who have specific prayer requests, do send it to us. Others uh, who would like to join in, uh, please send this uh, link out. It's the same link in the night and for the morning. And also all of us who need to be uh, having any kind of issue, any kind of help that we could give in any of this uh, difficult times, please do write into us. May God bless you. Thank you once again, dear Arjun. Uh, keep, we'll be keeping you in our prayers. The prayer rooms are open. Those who would like to go in and pray, uh, you, you can just write one in the chat box and uh, we'll send you there. Others who would like to stay on in the corporate room and pray, you're welcome to. Thank you.